And there's this big tough guy in a leather jacket with, you know, uh, all these tattoos all over him and metal and rings and all that. And you walk up and you're like, excuse me, uh, you know, which way is this? And they go, they look at you kind of nasty and then they go, <laughs> you know, and that's what these guys are like. You know, they're so intense on the outside, but really they're protecting a soft, delicate, lovely food. This is an amazing food. What's the most famous thistle in the world? Artichokes. Artichokes, right? And milk thistle is very famous. Blessed thistle. Artichokes, we eat those. This is basically a kind of artichoke. Thistles is a, isn't a, a scientific term. Thistle is a gen, general word, and there's probably eight or ten different genera that are in the grouping of thistles. You use that word, if that makes sense. But they're all composites. They're in the composite family. They're a whole, the composite family is so big that there's 12 different tribes that are in that family. So this is the thistle tribe, one of them. And you're like, well, how do I eat this thing? Well, first of all, these, this is a really nice species of thistle. I was hanging out of it this morning. So it's pretty approachable, even though it does have all those thorns around it. So one of the ways, if you just want to eat it and get it raw, is you, you fold those thistle spines away from you. See how I'm folding them down? And you keep bending them like that. And then you hold your fingers where the thistles are. And then you eat down to the thistle. And then you just have the, the little thistles left over. So feel free to try that if you're interested. Um, and then the whole stem, when the stems get them, this is a good size to get them. The stems are like celery. You just strip off the outer part and you eat the stems. They're full of celery. And then the root tastes a lot like burdock, if you've had that, or a kind of a kind of like a carrot. And uh, now, when do you want to get the roots of things? In the fall. In the fall, late fall, when the plant has died back, or the early spring, when the leaves are just coming, because that's where the energy is co concentrated. So now, if you dug this up, you a lot of the energy is up in the upper part of the plant, so the root won't have you know so much oomph to it. Um, and. Uh, and then the flower heads, when they come in, you can flip them over and eat the bottoms out of them. When the seeds come in, you can uh, grind up the seeds, make teas if you wanted to. So it's just an incredibly edible food. We, there's this one out west called elk thistle that has a stem like maybe this big, gets about this big. You feel like you're taking down an elk when you sit with it. Like five or six people can have a meal off of sitting and eating that particular thistle. So lots of food, especially in the early spring when those rosettes are on the ground, go in and dig them up and get those roots full of lots of energy. Roots, the roots of this are amazing for their energy. And all thistles help with your liver. You know, milk thistle is famous for that. It has a special uh, alkaloids in it, but all thistles are good for your liver and we all need that support right now. You know, we've put 140,000 different chemicals into the atmosphere since the 40s. We've only tested 3% of them for toxicity. So it's not just about eating well. It's, you've got to do that extra step of protecting the body, of um, giving it the nutrients and the fortification to be able to be strong. Now we have another weed coming up here that's very common. You probably have it in your garden. Anyone recognize this? It has comes off and has a little pink or white flower on the end of it. What's it called? Smartweed. Smartweed, right. So if you're smart, you'll remember this one. That's not really where it comes from. Some of them, a few of them will are smart, will smart you. They're, they'll, they'll burn your mouth a little bit. Not badly, but if you eat it, you'll get a little bit of a burn. That's where you get that name, is what I'm told. So this is a polygonum. Polygonum. Polygonum sagenus is in the Polygonaceae family. And um, this family has lots of food a little bit of medicine and no poison. So it's a family to jump into. All the Japanese knotweed, the dock, the yellow dock, the broadleaf dock, all the smartweed. There's over 200 smartweed species in the world. 70 are in this country. Now this is, gives you a good example of the kind of work that I do, okay? So we have 200 species of this in the world, 70 in this country. Now there's one that's very, very famous that we import from China. It's called Hoshu Wu are faux tea. Has anyone ever had faux tea before? Okay. Well, faux tea is the plant. We probably, what do we import? Let's, I'm just pulling a number out of my hat, but let's say 100,000 pounds of faux tea we bring into this country every year. Now, that has a, a list of problems with that, right? First of all, 
the footprint, the ecological footprint of bringing 100,000 pounds around the planet for us, right? Second of all, the stories we hear, I'll go to China and try to confirm this at some level that I can, but that we're, we're told that, the, that actually prisoners are used in the harvesting, so it's kind of like a slavery going on. And then you've got the whole question of, am I even getting the thing I'm ordering from China? Or anywhere, I don't mean to focus on China, but anywhere, you know? And that's called pharmacognosy, and there's a whole path of awareness. When you get a pile of roots, is it the ginseng that you thought it was, you know? That's called pharmacognosy. And then the last area is whenever plants and food and things leave one country to another, they're often fumigated, you know, one way. So what we're getting from China is has a lot of problems with it, right? Well, okay, so we've got 200 species in the world, 70 species in this country. Wouldn't you think that one of those species could be used in a similar way? That's called an analog. And so that's what my central work is, is learning the stories in other places of the world of famous plants, knowing that they have those species there, and coming here and saying, hey, we've got some species in that same genus. Don't you think we could use it in a similar way? And this is what we need to bring it back into the living knowledge of experience. And this is the big thing, is how to get out of here and actually know it in your body. And so that's going to take some time to do that. And